Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and today we're doing something different. So, well, hello there, you've got me face to face for once. So, okay, I just want to do a little bit of an introduction to um, this whole playlist that I'm going to do on 12x12s. Now, I have been promising my subscribers, you guys, that I was going to do a 12x12 series, and what I was going to do is I was going to buy one 12 by 12 pad and then show you how to utilize every single page within that. But I very quickly realized that in doing that, I gave myself um, an end date to that playlist and I didn't want to do that. So I thought, right, if I pick several 12 by 12s and then what I'll do is I will try and focus on using maybe one page or two pages per video, then it's one of those things I can keep doing and doing and doing. And then the playlist is one long playlist instead of me quick keep reinventing different playlists and there's enough playlists already I'm feeling. So that's what I'm planning to do now. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to flip you to the overhead so we can actually take a look at what I look for in a 12 by 12, the things I try to avoid, how I'd utilize stuff. Now I wanted to do this all in one video at the introduction because doing and discussing stuff like that will probably take up time in each individual video and I'd find myself repeating myself. So I just thought, right, I'll do an overall, the good, the bad, the indifferent, the ugly, how I'd utilize, what I like, what I don't like, all of the different things to that. So that that's what I'm going to do in a second. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this um, video once you've seen it. Uh, make sure you look at the different pads that you've got hanging around, really. Have a look at what you've put in your stash because you've gone mm, not overly keen on that. Think, how can I use that? Pull the stash out, get a look at it. At the end of the day, a 12 by 12 pad is either a pad of paper or a pad of card. If you ignore what the patterns are, you can turn them into many other things. So anyway, let's flip now and have a look at the video of me explaining what I look for in a pad. So needless to say, not all 12 by 12 pads are actually created equal. So I pulled a selection of them out and we're going to have a look at them. Now, never underestimate Christmas. Yeah, we see like this is a store here in the UK called The Works. So I get a craft pad for three pound. Now, yes, we're thinking, oh, that's seasonal. But you know, within this these pads, there's probably some generic designs I could use throughout the year. And also this price after Christmas goes down. So we're talking three quid for some good cardstock and it's all 12 by 12. I mean, some of this, I mean, I could use that in something that's not Christmas. Sorry, this is a bit close. I can't really pull out any further. So I'm going to have to just hope we can see this as I want it seen. So don't underestimate the Christmas cardstock. And the other thing is, after Christmas, when these are reduced in price, it's not going to go off. It's not going to evaporate. It doesn't need feeding. It just needs a bit of storage space. So buy your cardstock after Christmas or paper stock after Christmas, ready for the following Christmas. Now, next in line, let's see. Okay, one to be aware of. Um, if you're buying packs like this, and this was gifted to me by a friend, um, turn it on the side so I can see it in the light. Now, this is a combination of pages that are one-sided, and if I remember correctly, it's just got double sided is not it? Well, maybe it has not thought the other one did. Yeah, but there are things to be aware of in this. This is a lovely pad, yes, but it's quite specific. If I lift this up, you can see it's really, really shiny and glittery. Um, it does have two pages of the same design, which I like, because that means if it was double-sided, I could use both. Uh, but this shine that it has on it and the embedded glitter doesn't work for me. Um, there's plain pages in here, obviously, but let's see if I can find one that's going to really cause you a problem. Let's see if that one, I'm fussy cutting that one. Okay, this one is quite a big, bold design with lots of shininess on it. Now, the only thing you could potentially do if you're not going to use this as is, is you could paint over this and you'll probably find these plastic coated pieces would act like a resist, but then all you'd really be doing is changing the background. If you were to collage onto this, you'd have to consider which glues you're using because this plastic type coating on these flowers is probably going to be quite hard to cover. So anyway, just know that this is the sort of pad I tend to personally avoid. Oh, there's also another thing I don't really like about these pads. And this is, it's got 
uh, serrated edge there or perforated edge to remove this and what happens when you've done it if you can do it sorry about the noise is you'll see the edges of your pages always have that little bit where the serrations have been I have to trim those off um, just, it's just me I like a smooth edge now if I trim them off I'm obviously altering the size of um, the 12 by 12 so that's something else to consider but I'll put the other ones there you go um, okay big big pad this was from um, hobby craft in this country so it's sort of our equivalent to hobby lobby abroad um, this was in the reduced box and believe me there's a chunk of card in here now some of it is lovely some of it's maybe not my taste um, but there's possibility oh this is the one I was going to show you okay see this is double sided at the back and there's multiples of the same page, which is something I really like because it means that if I use, say, this is my favourite page and I use it, then at least I've got another two for ephemera or pieces in the future. So this has got double-sided and then it goes to single-sided. So um, I like that it's matte. I don't really like shiny paper or shiny card. Um, I, I don't know, just for me, that just doesn't work. This one is ever so slightly textural. I know you're probably not going to see that. I wonder whether I can put some on. You can just see there's sort of a linen type texture to this, which I quite like that as well. So it's good it's all in this one pack. There's a lot of sheets in here. Uh, 48 sheets in the pad. Okay, so that's quite a good deal. I would use that even if I painted over it and did other stuff on it or collaged on it. That was a good deal. And don't underestimate, the covers can be used for stuff. And the back covers are usually thicker than the front ones. And they make great good journal covers as well. Let's put that one to one side. Um, okay, this one was a bit of a... Something I thought it was going to be something different, and it wasn't. Um, this is from a company here in Britain called Crafter's Companion. Now, they bought this out, and it looks beautiful here. Um, and when I opened it up, I was pleased with some of the stuff in it, but it just, I don't know, it just didn't work for me. There are elements I absolutely love, but this is one of those pads I would definitely cut into, but I may not use the whole page. I mean, that's lovely, and that's lovely, but do I like the whole thing as one? No. But the thing I really do like about this, let's flip this over, is look at the opposite sides of every single page. They're beautiful. They've got different designs on them, different colours, perfect for making journal cards or tags um, because all of that can be written on. So if I don't like the other side of it, so let's just choose a page. Right? Say the project I'm doing, sorry, it's going to be weird looking at this on an angle. Um, doesn't, doesn't, that doesn't work for me, okay? I mean, I like elements of it, but say it doesn't work for me. But this side does. This is one of those typical ones I'd collage over and then I'd have a really nice back to it. So that's another thing to look for. Um, do I care about poundage or GSM or weight of card or paper stock? Not really, because a lot of the time I'll back it onto something anyway. It's down to what I'm going to eventually do with it if I'm going to make a journal cover. So let's let's just take one of these out of here. That's it. See, this is the type I like because I can just tear it up and I've got a smooth edge. So let's move this to one side. So if I've got this and I'm going to make, say, a traveller's notebook, if I was to fold this in half, I would have a really nice cover. I'd obviously have to cut it down. Is this thick enough for a cover? Probably not. But then I'd possibly be putting this onto maybe a bit of grey board or maybe an existing book anyway. So I don't tend to worry about the weight of it. I just get on with it. I'm not really a card maker. And I think it's more the genre of the card makers who worry more about GSMs, poundage and weights. Um, other options. OK. Um, as some of you know, I like jelly printing. So make your own papers. Now you can buy packs of 12 by 12 paper or card stock out there. It's not hugely thick, but actually I don't mind that because look at the backs of these. I'm always going to get the messy and grubby. So I always have to stick them to something. But what it does mean is if I make my own 12 by 12s, 
it means I've got something that's absolutely unique for my journaling, for my ephemera making, that I can use for gifts for people. I know that they're going to have a one-off one off piece of something that no one else is ever going to see and there will be jelly printing videos from well, it was a bit bright isn't it especially for this time of the day um there will be jelly printing videos from me in the future and believe it or not these are actually the ones that didn't really make the grade these are the ones that are in a stash that i'm going to probably put more paint on the top and turn them into something else so don't underestimate the fact that you can actually buy 12 by 12 cardstock that's white or cream and do it. But you could also do this on the unwanted pages from your 12 by 12 packs. Now, last but no means least, um, these are the ones that I really selected for this whole um, series. And this is probably, I think it's four of them here. There's four Stamperia books here of papers. And what I'm going to do is these are the ones I'm going to focus on as far as using in each of the individual videos. And then once I've used these up, which is going to be a lot, how many are in here? Um, 10, 20, so that's 40 videos in just here in front of you. So once I come to the end of that, I will select. But I thought, right, let's have a quick look through some of these just so you can see what's on them. And also I can tell you what the sort of things for I look for within a pad itself. So first of all, Stamperia for me is one of the premier um, pad makers out there and I love their artwork and I love their attention to detail. Personal choice, there's plenty of others out there who are equally as good. This is just the brand I tend to come back to. So from the get-go, the cover, lovely. Now, you know what? It's the cover, yes. But if I cover that up, look at that. That's journal tags right across there. I mean, these could be small journal cards if I cut that off. Now, on the inside, of course, there's always images on the inside and the outside. So you could use this as a journal cover. How, how lovely would that bit be? But again, you can cut into it. This page for me, slight problem. I don't like that in the middle. Um, everything is too central in here. When I tend to do things like journal making, I like the focal points to be on the edges not necessarily in the middle because this makes it very hard because if I fold this or do anything I have to take that piece out to make something of it so this is the sort of thing I'd probably collage over um quite like that one that's nice now pre-made um journal cards always a good benefit they're a really fast way to do a journal what I would do is I just come in with my guillotine, cut all of these out, and I put, put them in my ephemera box and they'd be ready to go. Just one of those little things to tuck in, never underestimate them. Um, lovely page, again, this one if I folded it would make quite a nice cover, but this also makes quite nice pages if I was to fold it in half. Be aware though, when you have to fold things in for a signature of a journal, this is 12, so you're probably gonna have to cut about three inches off. Don't always think you have to cut off the top. Think, can I cut off the bottom as well? Or maybe take an inch off the bottom here and the two inches off there just to centralize your image. Um, back of this, quite like the back of that. This is a lovely piece. Now, with this one, I would probably cut that as a strip, turn it this way on, and that would be a belly band to me. And if I was very clever and cut that as a three inch strip, that gives me a really beautiful cover there that I could use and that bit would be gone. Lovely, lovely, lovely for the old shabby chic stuff. Great piece for using for anything from just cutting into tags and shapes. This, this would be a bit of a challenge for me to use in a journal. If I was doing a home decor piece, yes, I could definitely use that as a background piece. But again, this is one of the sort of things I'd collage over. But you know what? I'm loving that side anyway, so I don't mind sacrificing this side. If there's one thing I'm a little... I don't like about these type of pads is there's only one of each page, so I'm forced to make a decision on which side I actually use. Again, beautiful, beautiful, nice bit of journaling space. Trouble is... I'm going to have to trim it down if I actually want to put it into a journal. Now, I'm not going to go through every single page, but there are certain things I just want to show you. Okay, again, pre-made ephemera. I have no problem with these, but I do with these. I struggle cutting circles. So unless you've got a die that is actually that size or a craft punch that cuts a perfect circle, 
I'm horrible at fussy cutting a circle and if I fussy cut them I'd probably never use them because I'd never be happy with the smooth sides but definitely there are circular dies out there and there are circular punches even if it's not the right size you could maybe punch it so it's smaller or you could use a die that's got a fluted edge or something so always a good one again more fe ephemera stuff more detailed stuff and when it comes to the back don't forget on the back they've got a miniature of every single page what I would do is I would actually cut out those squares on each of them, probably not that one actually. And then what I would do is I could use that as a little decorative element that I could actually stick onto a tag or something. So that's the House of Roses one. We can go a bit faster on these now because you've actually seen where my thinking is. We've talked about that. You will normally find, I'm loving that actually, you will normally find that things like um, books from the same company will come in a sort of format. There'll be several pages of double-sided and then you'll go into um, ephemera pieces. Now I purposely chose four books that were very similar with each other because say we're going to make um, an ephemera folder out of one of the pages we can then use another pad the ephemera format to go in it. So I've sort of stuck with pink and roses. I'm um, loving all this Never underestimate having little words. They're great. I use words a lot. Um, back to that. Again, this is one of those pages that I would struggle with. I would really have to be in there and die cut those. Trouble with dies is getting the die absolutely central to the design, but I can work with that. Um, or a craft punch. Quite liking that. As you can see, this whole pad is very much a backgrounds pad for me. I'm um, loving this. Yes, I would go in and fussy cut all those out. However, that would make a really, really lovely cover if I wanted to do like a gra gratitude journal or a thank you or an affirmation journal. Again, more tags. Not sure I'd take the time fussy cutting those, but I definitely cut the squares out from inside them. Um, I'm loving this actually. I haven't really had a chance to look through all of these since I purchased them because life's just been a bit too busy. So there you go. And again, I'd cut the squares out of there or the squares that don't have anything in them just to utilize that. Um, that was something called Dream. This one is Shabby Rose, obviously aimed at Shabby Chic. Um, we discussed the cover. This has got some really beautiful papers in it. I have looked at this. The trouble is which do you choose, that side or that side? Now, obviously, shabby chic, it's going to be that side. You could write on this side. Um, this one, if you didn't want to use it in its entirety, you could fussy cut the but butterfly out. You could cut strips and tags out of that because this butterfly is bigger than the butterfly's there. So if you wanted to have some variation, um, Having an envelope is a really nice thing to do that it can be tucked in. You can make your own, obviously. If you cut this one out and then draw around this on some of the pages, you can actually make as many envelopes as you have space for if you just use it as a template. There are dies out there. There are gadgets out there for making them, but that's just a way of, without spending any more money, cut this out, put it down, draw it around it with a pencil, cut it out, make sure you erase any pencil marks you find. Again, nice bits of ephemera. There's quite a bit of ephemera in this one. Don't mind that. There's some really lovely pages. Um, some bigger journaling cards, postcards. Those are a good thing to have. Um, again, consider these sizes if you've got a page you're not overly keen on. Um, use the same dimensions and then I would use a, a corner punch to actually round the corners. And then you've got things of a similar size you don't have postcards in all varying different sizes again here we go stamperia likes its circles kerry doesn't like the circles but well then we've discussed that and i will be showing you how i do that in one of the videos again some really nice subtle backgrounds these are just looking for a focal point and the back cover is nice in that it does have some detail on i think that's the only repeat of one of the ones further in the book again cut out the squares you like and then don't forget, this is just cardstock. So you can collage onto this. So you can use it for backing stuff. That was Shabby Rose. Last one is Hortensia. Um, obviously, it didn't stay with the pink all the way through. But um, I've got the rice paper already or the wafer paper for this already. No, 
it's rice paper griffiths um i've got that already so look, right we'll use that now this has got quite a lot in it um like this whole page of ephemera if you were to fussy cut that out that gives you a really good starter for your stash um, nice squares here um they could be squares as they are but then you could take these and fold one of these in half and make a really pocket size or purse size journaling notebooks so don't don't overlook these and think they're just square you could actually fold them and make a mini tn loving that page this seems slightly out of place for me but that's fine because i like this bit anyway and i probably just put something over that um the face really gives this a period look so when you're looking for pads if they've got women or men or faces or children in them be aware that that sort of sets the age or the style for the whole pad if you're using it in a journal so just be aware of that one i've been caught out a few times myself with that like that's a very very stylized um period so loving this this is quite nice this would actually make a nice cover to be honest there you go if i was doing a garden or a botanical journal but then I really love this too because I would cut these strips out and they would give me belly bands or they'd give me trims. Loving that. This is a really nice page as well. Definitely just something that all you really needed to do. What's the back look like? You could even write on that back. I would literally just cut this into tag shapes or circles or um, journaling cards, anything like that. That's a beautiful page. That seems so much brighter and clearer than the other pages. But again, we've got the thing of what do I do with it? It's in the middle and it's a bit big for most of my journals. If I was going to do anything with this other than maybe collage over it, which would be a pity, is maybe I put it into a 12 by 12 frame and then build up on it to make this the background for a home decor piece. The other side's OK, I must admit, it's not not my favourite. Again, we've got one of these that's built like this. Now, we've got to remember that 12 by 12s are predominantly aimed at the scrapbooking world. So they like 12 by 12 pages. As a journaler and an ephemera maker, that's not what I'm looking for. But that doesn't mean it's not great. I mean, you could really fold that, make a journal cover. So I'll pull this over again. Make this a journal cover. I'd have to do something about that. But you know what? That's fine. Do a couple of fake leather hinges on it. So there you go. That's that. Again, more ephemera. That's really pretty. I would probably just cut that directly into four and have it as four square journaling cards. That's nice too. You've got stripes there. Always cut the strips out if you've got the chance to do strips. Just get on in the guillotine or a trimmer. It gives you enough things to look at. Hmm. I'm not a lover of fussy cutting. Um, I do it, but I'm not a lover of it. And I think I'd probably go insane if I was fussy cutting that out there. I would probably go in, I would probably fussy cut some of the larger elements. Um, probably get around that. I'd probably take the butterflies out, but not sure. Probably take the birds out, but they're quite cute. Would I go for everything on that page? Probably not. I would, however, make a grab for the strip because I really love that strip along the bottom. And the back page again, we've got um, the squares you could cut out. And also we've got the strips down the side of the back cover. And if you look at all of them, they've got these strips down the side of the back cover. So with each of them, that's potentially a belly band or it's a trim for the edge of a page. Something just to enhance what you do. So that's sort of giving you a bit of a look-see of what I look for in, um, in a pad. So 12 by 12s are great. So let's go back to myself and see what we think about all that. So welcome back. Hope that sort of clarified some of the stuff that I look for in a pad. Um, I've chosen some Stamperia pads. In the future, I will probably choose stamp. Um, I will probably choose other manufacturers' pads as well. Uh, currently, I'm sort of only in Britain because I can't travel anymore for obvious reasons because of the pandemic. But when I start traveling again, I'll sort of keep my eye open in different countries. And if I come across 12 by 12 pads, I'll pick them up and add them to my stash. So now, when are these videos coming out? These videos are going to be added to my to-do list of filming and they will come out when I get around to doing them, I could probably film five in one week and then disperse them over the next three or four weeks. 
I could do a period of maybe not putting one out there at all for maybe a month and then I'll put a couple out at the same time. So don't expect them to be coming out on a regular basis, but make sure if you've subscribed, you'll have notifications and then you'll see when they come up. My aim is still to do at least two videos a week for you guys. If my schedule calms down a little bit, which would be nice, but maybe not nice because that means the work isn't out there, but I'll try and do three videos a week. It depends on how long they are. Um, the 12 by 12 series, I'm hoping to keep the videos reasonably short because you want to be able to click back onto it and have a look through it instead of sitting through an hour's worth just to find out those one little details for you. Oh, it reminds me, something else I'll always do too is there are lots and lots and lots of ingenious ways of using a 12 by 12 already out there. So if I've been inspired or I've seen something or something sparked a bit of interest from me, I will do my absolute darndest to credit the video that I saw it in or the person that I heard doing it. That doesn't mean they're going to be the originator of the design because I'm not going to go down that rabbit warren of trying to find out who did it, when they did it, how long ago they did it, but I'll just try and credit the person or the video that I've seen and if I can remember where I've seen it because I've already got a stash of them um, a stash of designs in a book of mine if I can find out where I did them from I'll actually link that video as well so you can see their variation on it so just leaves one thing left to be done really so these are my various social media links in all of the different forms I'd love you to like me share me subscribe to me It'd be great to have you on the journey with me um, it just leaves now for me to say goodbye. So this is Kerry the Grafter, that's C-E-R-I, signing off for now. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.